Hello everybody, my name is Eric and today I'm going to show you how to install Windows 11 on ARM on a ARM Mac for free, which is not officially supported, almost like a reverse Hackintosh, because Microsoft currently has an exclusivity deal with Qualcomm, who make inferior ARM CPUs. So if you want to install it, here's how. So first of all, here's the instructions. You need to download the Spice Guest Tools and Windows for ARM, which you just need to sign into your Microsoft account and then download the Windows client ARM64 Insider Preview. Okay, wrong thing. So now we can go create a new and we want to choose Virtualize. This is because we're using an ARM CPU to run an ARM CPU. Emulate would mean that we can run something that isn't ARM. Okay, so we want Windows. Import the HDX image. So here we go. We've already got it, but it even has a nice option for you to download it. Now we can choose eight gigabytes. If you have just a regular M1, you might want to use four. Okay, I don't think we want to do that. And here we go. It now has this nice, easy installer, unlike the previous version where you'd have to set this all up yourself. Okay, now we just click play. And here we go, start boot option. Okay, the thing's spinning. And it should now boot. And because this is virtualization, not emulation, it should run reasonably fast. Yep, starting services, getting devices ready. There we go. Okay, so we got our usual Windows 11 setup. Okay, uh, I'm just going to leave it on the United States. I don't think it makes a difference. US? No, I don't. Let's just do this and then we can... Oh, the mouse doesn't work. Okay. I think you have to... There's some sort of... Capture mouse goes. There we go. It still doesn't work. So we just have to use the keyboard then. Uh, continue with limited setup. Except... I hate this. I, I don't need a security question. Why do I... Okay. Well, that's finished and now we need to install the QEMU guest editions or spice and right now we've got if you don't have good enough graphics acceleration for whatever reason Windows 11 disables the rounded corners I can't think it's a super intensive thing to do but I guess it is okay so for whatever reason it thinks our CPU is one gigahertz Funny how Apple doesn't quote a clock speed for any of their CPUs, but I don't think it's actually one gigahertz, and now it's restarting. Here we go. It's just loading in. And now you won't really be able to use this for gaming because the graphics acceleration isn't there, but otherwise, this is a pretty performant VM. So it detects the Vert 6.2 one gigahertz processor. 8 gigabytes of installed RAM. This currently has four calls pass through. Let's let's try some tasks out. Like a web browser, because that's usually a good way of getting an idea of single thread performance. And I'm just going to download Chrome, partially because I don't like Edge, and also just because... Oh, wow, that's slow. Because I have tested Chrome on a lot of different systems, and I know how it should work. And also go to our display settings. Let's go... Okay. Right, let's just do 1080p, because I know that will give us a reasonably sized window. And this doesn't do high DPI right now. No, it's still reasonably responsive. Let's see if there's any updates. Just run browser speedometer. That seems really slow. Wait, is this... Oh, okay, no, we're gonna... Then we will have to use Edge. So that is double emulation right there. <coughs> Given that it's double emulated, it's actually running pretty well. I thought, wow, that is slow for an application. But no, if it's running under... So wow. So there's no version of Chrome for ARM Windows. So ARM Windows really is limited. So from what I have heard, the emulation is pretty good. That is, it's not an amazing school, 
but it's not a horrible score. It's better than most computers. I'm just going to see if I can find a Surface laptop on browser speedometer. Ooh. 61. Ooh, that's, that's horrifically bad. Okay, let's try another one. I don't think I've... So these Snapdragon CPUs really suck. I guess that's what we've learned. I think the Pro X is on based, so it can't even beat Core i5. Okay, that's that's embarrassing. But at least what we've learned from looking at this is that we are still beating the Surface lineup at their own game. I do actually want to run it under emulation because honestly, if I was using a Windows on ARM device, I'd probably still use Chrome, even though that's not that's clearly suboptimal. So let's get an idea. It doesn't feel slow, but it clearly is. One other minor thing is it seems that Windows's VM detection doesn't apply to ARM, because despite the fact that this is clearly a virtual machine, it doesn't, it, it says vert, it doesn't detect, it would say virtual machine yes if this was an x86 VM, but it doesn't, that's interesting. Oof, yeah, that's, that's about what it felt like, it felt abysmally slow. And it was. Okay, let's try. Let's see if we can go to my, my channel and see how this VM can handle YouTube videos, especially given that it doesn't it doesn't have any sort of hardware acceleration. Independent business owner want to keep Okay. Acceptable. It is able to load video and play it in 480p. Let's just try 1080p 60. It seems to be able to roughly handle that. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare try 4K on this. I did dare. Ugh. Yeah, it runs about like you'd expect. It's not smooth, but it does technically run. I guess we could. Okay, well, given we, you know, last video I tried OpenTTD on the 2080i. Well, now we can try OpenTTD again. I think this actually might be interesting because OpenTTD is a fairly CPU intensive game and it is going to run absolutely horribly on this system. Okay. Oh. Ugh. I, I can never, I haven't, played, I haven't like seriously played this game in a while, so I keep screwing up how the trains are supposed to route, but the game does work, not super well, but it is to some degree playable, so, you know, this isn't completely unusable, but I don't, I don't really recommend. I think if you're trying to do anything more than just test Windows on ARM, you'll probably want to get parallels, but this is another way. And what's cool about this project is that it isn't just useful for running Windows 11 on ARM, which of course you can do with parallels or VMware, you can also run any x86 operating system, Windows XP, it, and it will run classic software pretty well. It can also run Solaris 9 on the Spark architecture. So it's good for that because you can run a bunch of different stuff. So that's going to be all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.